Research has taught us that smoke and the products of combustion from today's fires are more toxic than they have ever been, and exposure to these substances has been associated with negative health effects as well as the development of many types of cancers. Wearing personal protective equipment and decontamination have proven to be the most effective methods for protection from these harmful substances. Decontamination should take place at the incident scene as well as back at the station by taking a shower. Personnel will not hydrate or consume food until the on-scene decontamination is complete and they have reported to rehab. Now, we will review how on-scene decontamination works. Ladder 29 driver set up for decon. Ladder 29 unit, you're going to be the decon unit. The decon area will be established by the incident commander. Ladder 29 driver set up for decon. Set up by the suppression driver. And identified with a cone. Connect the reducer to the discharge and the hose to the reducer. Lake out the hose and connect the nozzle. Supply the line with idle pressure. When you exit the fire structure, stay on air and report straight to the decon area. As personnel arrive at the decon area, a determination needs to be made as to the firefighter that has the least amount of air because he will be decontaminated first. Ensure that the Velcro on the collar area of the bunker gear is secured. Loosen the shoulder and waist straps on the SCBA of the firefighter that will be decontaminated. The firefighter being decontaminated will lean forward and the helmet will be briefly rinsed. The firefighter will stand up straight and hold his arms out to the sides while being rinsed with water front and back from the collar line down. Next, working from the collar line down to the boots, using a soft bristle brush and the soap and water mixture that was prepared by the engine driver, the firefighter will be scrubbed and then rinsed with water. After completing gross decontamination, personnel may go off air and remove their PPE removing as much gear as possible prior to removing the fire gloves. Fire gloves should then be removed, avoiding as much skin contact as possible with the exterior of the gloves. After removing all of the bunker gear, personnel will use department-provided decontamination wipes to clean their face, neck, hands, and other areas of their skin. Bagging personal protective equipment. When personnel are released from the scene, they will bag their PPE using department-provided bags to minimize exposure to off-gassing of residual contaminants. Although gear contamination has been reduced with the on-scene decontamination, it is recommended that personnel wear EMS gloves while handling the equipment to minimize the cross-contamination of residual substances. The following equipment will be bagged. Gloves, bunker pants and boots, coat and helmet. The firefighting hood will be exchanged on scene with the incident commander. The gear will be bagged in the following order. Gloves first. Next, after folding the coat to minimize the contact of the inner lining to other gear, it will be placed on top of the gloves. Then, the bunker gear pants and boots will be placed on the coat. And last, the helmet will be bagged with the top of the helmet towards the pants and boots. Then, the bag opening will be twisted and tape closed using department-issued tape. The remaining loose end will be folded over on itself and then taped again. PPE that has been decontaminated and bagged can be used when needed. All tools and equipment that were used on the incident will be cleaned on scene using the soft bristle brush and the soap and water mixture. Our ultimate goal is to be proactive in lowering the cancer risk to our personnel. To accomplish this goal, we will have to adopt new processes as well as change past learned behaviors. It is important to understand that this requires a change in operational culture. Being receptive and willing to adapt is an integral part to ensure our success.